All right, so let's do now uh, a series of leg and foot studies in some foreshortening. Let's work on that uh, uh, idea and concept now. And we'll start out with our first image, and I'll just do a full page of uh, studies. It'll be a little bit smaller, make a little better, better sense. So this first image we've got, we'll, we'll put a little bit of the, of the um, pelvis in there too as well we get because we've got a crop shot in here so I took I've taken these images and then I cropped into where we want to focus on the foreshortening so this kind of pelvic girdle uh, is here and this kind of girding in through here with the belly coming down center point and through here so what makes this challenging is is the thigh and the foot relationship, the leg, the foot relationship. And we really are eliminated uh, the lower leg and the calf in the most part. It's still there, but it's very squeezed. So the first thing we wanna, wanna get here is the movement now from the pelvis to the, to the knee here. And if there's not a lot of great distance, it's pretty, it's pretty foreshortened, so it gets pretty flat. So we're talking about and looking at a cylinder, right, that is um, squeezed, kind of coming at us, but coming slightly down since we're above it just a little bit. So this is what I see visually, what I'm conceiving of my conception. So we have the, the outer leg here towards the pubic region, the abductor muscles in through here, the leg, right in through here, coming through. And then we've got the end part of the knee, the patella, and then below it, we'll kind of capture the, the calf to all of, kind of all together, and then we'll separate that out in a moment. And then we have the patella right over here, just a kneecap, if you will, kind of squarish at a slight angle coming down this way here and then here, right in through here. So we've got this tube coming at us. And of course, it's more complex than that. We know that this folds over a little bit in through here. <clears throat> And it's going to fold, but fold back around. We won't get too detailed, so we can tighten this up. And then this leg really pulls back into the um, <clears throat> the uh, lower leg pulls back, and they they pretty much flex together. So we uh, don't see much of that calf, even though it's about right in through here to here. And the lower leg and that part of the top part of the calf is probably about right in through here coming on top. So this really arches arches over for now like so. In the box, if we broke this down into a box, this would come at us. This would be the front plane of the box. Can you see it right about in through here construction wise? So we come back in, the flow takes us, the rhythm takes us back into the foot. And so the foot winds up being here, flexed here. Right, and then we have the toes in the in the shadows, shadow toes, right in through here. And so we're just going to draw the toes as if they're in a in a sock right now, and they'll come across kind of this way, like so, in through here. And then we'll start to tighten this up a little bit. Let me come on in with the camera, and we'll get a little bit tighter up in this study now. So there's the. There's the uh, beginning part of the laying. We'll leave the hand out. The laying of the um, of the leg here. So let's pull in now, a little tighter, so you can see this. Bring it over a little bit. There we go. And we'll get a little tighter study going on here. So I'm also using a, uh, again a Faber Castell. Uh, what is this, a medium cadmium red pencil. So it's kind of waxy, kind of pastel -y, kind of in between pastel and wax uh, pencil a little bit. <clears throat> so we have this belly region coming around, pubic region over here, a little bit of extra weight, just the girth of the belly down to the pubic area and through here, and we'll just shorthand that through. And then we'll come over to right where the hip bone, the pelvic crest would be over and through here. Right through there, and this part right here gets a little straighter around the tro trochanter area before it gets a little bit straighter. Tensa, tensor fascia lata area and through here. This little soul, this is probably too much information, but it gets a little bit kind of a straight line in through here. Then we start to bulge out with 
our foreshortened leg in through here. We curl around, you see, right in through there, slow. Nice curl in through there. This curls around in through here. So I'm just thinking about a cylinder, a tube in this foreshortening. This comes on down, right in through here, through. And this becomes this line now becomes part of the part of the inner thigh, but also part of the fatty pocket of the pelvic region. Both one going one way, the other one coming around the other way, and then back through. Then we come on back down to the pelvic region, right into here to the abductors of the leg, well, the upper leg that hang on to the pelvis. So we get this is probably a little bit of the buttock right back into here and this this is obviously the pubic vaginal region so we'll just skip all that and then we have coming through then the leg wants to come back over so we're playing off this tube right in through here but it gets certainly gets more organic and more human like so we have to keep that in mind as we're foreshortening but everything I keep in my mind is that tube what's going on with that uh, that um, cylinder or tube so as we come through here, we're going to get a little bulge of the thigh in foreshortening. That would be a party, pretty thick part of it. And it pops through here, comes on over, and then we get an underneath bulge running through here. This starts to turn and curve, all of that curving and turning, coming around, coming around, coming around like so. And then underneath, right here, pops out, overlaps. We get this bulge in here, the sartorius area probably coming over here to the tendons of this part of the thigh in through here and then we start to feel can you see the shadow on this side it's very subtle very soft these quad muscles we'll get into anatomy later on we should stop getting the names there we go coming through and we'll just put a little contour lining and shading and right now just a little bit to where we get to that bulge in through here and then I'll find it on the other side we'll come across the form come across the kneecap and you can see this is at an angle where we want to start to bulge this this comes out and over like so then <clears throat> we find this uh, because the leg is, is uh, crouched and flexing in on itself we find this bulge here right right in through here coming over okay and in through so <clears throat> we this allows for the femur to come through and the muscles right in through here of course this will get all shaved down right in through here and this gets us into the patella region of the condyles of the femur and also of the tibia and fibia down below. All right, so we're coming across here and we have, we see this tibia, excuse me, the tibia and fibia down here, but then the, the patella, or just the, the kneecap in through here, and also the really the condyles of the top of the femur in through here. So we have the patella kind of emerging in through here, and it's kind of blocky, do you see that? But it's kind of, it's a softer edge, so you have to be careful, you can't define it with a, a real heavy kind of edge, but we'll just get this leg foreshortened in through here, and it starts to, you can see it start to turn in through here, like so. <clears throat> kind of emerges out naturally, softer edge, and then we can pick up a little bit of a harder edge here as this leg comes in. This becomes now the upper part of the calf, upper leg, right in through here as it overlaps just a little bit and comes on through. <clears throat> Get that downward. So this whole, this whole thing turns downward from about where the highlight is, about right here, all of this gets, since it's in shadow now, too, it all turns downward. So that's where the, the tube, if you will, stops and gets shaved off, or the box coming at us, if you will, gets shaved off a little bit, and it comes down 
away from us even further now. <clears throat> kind of highlighting through there. Won't go into full shading still, but I'll get, just wanted to find the form a little bit more for you. Of course, this gets shaved off here. This comes downward. Of course, we're getting into the, it'll come down into the foot and through there. Get to find this a little bit further. Belly button would be probably about right, right into, right into that region. <clears throat> start to find that a little bit further and through there. And so we can start to say, all right, this inner thigh, we got to bring out this detail a little bit further. Here, the inner thigh. And then we've got now the lower leg to finish off a little bit. So this bulging, these uh, muscle and fat mass running right through here, we've got this gets shaved off in downwards, it trends downward now as the leg. We define that further. And then we come back inside here and we can hit this a little further, this, this squeezing of the muscle in the form. And then it starts to let up. This is where the patella, the upper leg, continues on. And then gets to the lower leg right in through here. But it's a softer edge, there's no strong crease. We have to end that darker line in through there. And we can place another line opposite in the opposite curve to show how they squeeze together. It's two, two opposing lines together. And then we can get into the lower part of the calf now starts underneath where it gets a little darker in here. It folds through really organically. So we know that that's egg form. And just going to follow the egg form of the space of the calf as it comes downward here, comes underneath, and then tucks up and through here, right in through there. And then we get really a pretty good idea of now what's going on with this, this leg in through here. <clears throat> Not easy drawing by any stretch of the imagination. So if you're struggling, then that's probably normal, natural, because we all struggle to get through that point of it. <clears throat> but once you start to learn how to draw, taking any object, a cube, a sphere, a cylinder, a cone, and you can uh, draw it from any viewpoint, any, any direction, any perspective uh, or viewpoint really, uh, in any position, you've, you could probably draw the figure pretty well with just a, some study. Then later on if you want to get into certainly anatomy, that's, that'll be there for you too. So I'll continue to use some contour line here for that knee. That leg. So now I want to jump into um, the bottom of the foot. Let's do that now, and even if it's in, even though it's in shadow, and let's define out some of those. Let's tease out some of those uh, foot features. All right, so let's define this foot a little bit further. So we're moving over where it folds a little bit. So I'll alter its position just a little bit here. We're coming down with this foot, bring it down. So we're looking at it kind of it straight down, and then it starts to open up and start to flex flex uh, for us in the viewpoint here and then starts to touch the ground you know right in through here so we get a nice flexing through here so what I look for is a couple of lines now in this part of the drawing I look for not all the individual toes yet what I'm looking for here is as if it was kind of in a sock I tell my students here at NKU that matter of fact I told one just yesterday we're talk talking about the foot drawing it from a long distance far distance away uh, I see the line of where the toes line up. It's a curved kind of line in this, in this particular drawing. See how it curves over and through and kind of comes back around the, uh, the figure. I'm going to put a little brown line. Something to give it a little bit of laying down quality. See how it sits there? 
Now, <clears throat> that's a ni nice line to play off of, but let's, what about the top of the toes, where the toes come out of? It's kind of parallel. It gives me a place to show where that stress and the tension of the toes are going to be right in through there. And so, in a shorthand, excuse me, in a shorthand study, meaning if you have a limited amount of time to draw, maybe like 5, 10, 15 minutes, you don't have time to noodle in there and get every, every toe or every position, that might be enough of a uh, concept to draw with that keeps the foot uh, looking like a foot, if you know what I mean, and not um, uh, so awkward. That makes sense. That makes sense. So I'm going to put this in shadow just a little bit. And uh, let's, let's uh, kind of bring out the toes a little bit further. Let me crop in on that foot. They're a little hard to see. They're dark. But we can keep the concept alive of blocky forms in tubes. Then we can really have this knocked out. So let me pull in a little bit further so you can see a little closer. Get this in. My professional camera work. Don't you love it? There we go. Okay. So <clears throat> the the toes now, the gesture of the toes, if you notice that the big toe moves, I'll do it a little bit over, let's see, over here. The big toe moves in this direction. Do you see that? And whereas the second, third, fourth, and the pinky move start to hug the floor further and start to move downward in slightly opposite directions. Especially, take a look at the pinky toe, the arrow, uh, or the big toe and the pinky toe. See how they're kind of pinching in together. I think that's, that's pretty interesting uh, uh, kind of thing to think about. Um, well, how they're gripping and holding and stabilizing the floor. So we'll come back to the toe here. Big toe right in through here. Pretty much a block. We're drawing the side of it. Coming up now here, and then around the tube just a little bit, right in through there, and over. That's where it attaches a little bit. And then we get a little bit more of a crease of the top, right in through here. And we'll just start to come around. It starts to flatten out pretty good, right in through there. Because we're getting a pretty foreshortened toe. There's nothing easy about drawing that toe. So this is the length and then right as we come across here, this ooh, this little area is the head of the toe. Use the head toe right in through here. Here's the bottom of it. Right in through here as it squeezes through. Keep that flat right in through there. And then the nail, we don't see much of the nail. See it as kind of just a shadow but it's curved. Do you see it right in through there a little bit? Just kind of a shadow right in through there. This is kind of the blocky front part of the toe, this front face right in through there. So that's about all we see of that, of that uh, foot through, through there of the big toe. And this creases over where we get the crease down of the foot. This can go darker. Go a little darker just to show it off a little bit further from the from the thigh. And let's go for the second toe. I'm going to flatten out the bottom of the big toe just a little bit as it touches, squeezes that floor a little bit. And then we'll go for the next next toe. So we I have this idea of the action through here. Matter of fact, we can get all of them here and then the third toe squeezing and really gripping the fourth toe, kind of bracing that to get ready for the pinky that does the opposite kind of grip on that side. Make sure you count your toes. We have five, right? Most of us, I do believe. So the next toe, there's a space in between those, those toes, right in through here. As the next toe comes out, emerges about right in through here at the top of the toe. And on the other side, we'll kind of come over here a little bit to that toe. Okay, and come through. All right, we're coming on down. Here's the, here's the in between space of the toe right through there. Here's, we're still at the top on this side. Here's the side of it. We've got that together and it comes in nice and curved, gives us some space 
see how that toe fits along this kind of design line as we run, run through it a little bit further. And then we see the stretch of the head of the toe kind of pull the opposite, really stressed here, pops out a little bit further over here. Okay, really kind of squeezed in. I could have made mine pretty, pretty squeezed through. I like, I like it. Give it maybe a little bit more stress. And then we've got kind of just the finish of the knuckle right in through here and all this gets kind of contoured with a little tone. Be careful drawing a lot of toenails. Just indicate them for now. This ridges up the toes because the, the flesh hugs the toenail. So I'll just give an indication rounded right in through here. Make less of an issue of the toenail, more of an issue of the structure of the toes and you'll draw immediately better feet. I kind of liken that to beginning students who draw the eyes really big and they let the whites of the eyes be really white, which is not really the, the case. Okay. All right, so let's go for the uh, third toe. I'm gonna just thin this out just a little bit. Third toe, we have a little space in between here where it starts. We get a little side through there it really wants to grip and come down, so we're going to come over, pull this over, and then it comes through elegantly, the knuckle, the toe, here, the condyle, the toes, it comes together, and it comes down to the last part, a little bit more length here, and it's almost turned a little bit more to the side, in through here, and we'll come down, right in through there, that toe. And we'll get in on the inside to get the side of that through, through up and through there. And then around, it's pretty much in that viewpoint, it starts to get more of a shape. Just shave that down to the toe a little bit. There we go. Then we'll hit the fourth toe, which is the great forgotten toe for some reason. It's that little, little piggy that gets kind of forgotten. All hail the, the fourth toe whatever that means. So we come up to the top head of the knuckle of the, of the fourth toe here. It looks a lot positioned of the third toe, but it's a little bit more pointy. It's starting to really brace and these toes are turning back in. So we have this head here, here's the top, and then we get to the side of it. It's pretty tight drawing in there, no doubts. And then we come over and get down, I'm just kind of following the shape now of it. And then it points out, some toes can get pointy after we live with them for a good while, we callous them out and they get pointy. And they get strange shapes if you break, if you break in, broken a lot of your toes like I have with sports over the years. Especially when I played, used to play competitive club field hockey at Arizona State when I was a grad student. And if you've ever played field hockey, those of you that are European or Asian, Pakistan, India, you know what I'm talking about, that hard plastic ball hits you in the foot and it's as if your life has ended. Woo! It is a hot mess of toenail pain. Okay. And then, so that's the fourth toe. Sorry about the digression. And then the fifth, we'll come down, we'll catch the, the last of the leg here, or the, excuse me, the foot coming down the bulk of that. This is the outside of the foot here, the knuckle, and it's squeezing. And then underneath it, overlaps here is the pinky toe coming out popping the knuckle head the, the second to last digit and then it comes out and then see how it wants to travel back in and then flattens out here along the toe right through there it's pretty much a shape but you have to think about the form and that gets that that uh, pinky toe. And so that concludes the toes. Just the one, one last thing, leave space in between the toes, right? And then also the conditioning of the foot. This really, this is where the stress is right in through here of this toe. So that's where you could put a little stress line, a little undulating kind of turn right in through there. So let me take a little darker pencil now. I'll take a black let me pull out, well, let's see, pull over a little bit maybe. And let's widen out my beautiful camera work. And let's, let's just emphasize the overall forms of our foreshortening 
here with a little darker pencil. That's a nice technique you can use if you want, just to use two different colors. I like to do that for effect. <clears throat> and then so we'll start it back into our thigh, push that line a little bit right here on the top. Just going to emphasize the, the sketchy quality of it. Like, like I said, we're not doing a full value study. We're just doing a, a range of, of Clarif clarification drawing for educational purposes for our studies for foreshortening. So this turns. You're getting used to make your value and your contour line fit with the form coming across the form. See how this gets moved downward a little bit? This starts to get pushed in. So I'm using a, a waxier pencil. It's easier with charcoal pastel, but I find ultimately in the beginning for students, it's really hard to control those. So I'll try to not to use those as much. A little bit more tone in through here for the bulge of the thigh, getting close to the kneecap in through here. There we go, to the patella and the top in here. <clears throat> There's the highlight right in through here. So this is where, right in through here where I'm drawing, that's where it really boxes off and starts to turn downward. Right in through there. I'm going to bring out this eraser to hold that highlight a little bit so you can see that a little further. Right in through there and kind of smooth it out. Right in through. Sometimes I'll kind of just lightly outline it with a soft edge to give it a highlight tonality and we'll pick up the patella back again running through here. Make it a little bit harder. It's kind of a boxy, boxy form. You see it come out now a little bit better here, there, over through here a little bit. That's better. This boxier side. This is, tends to get even boxier, right in through there. <clears throat> so we can start to feel it come down a little bit further and start to, to uh, pounce out a little bit. And then we'll, right in through here, we'll define that line weight a little bit further. Right in through here, where we see that fold of the thigh. Right in through here. And on in, this gets squeezed. These undulating lines tell us of that Squeeze the fat opposite little lines right through here. And then we'll get the outline of the foot a little bit stronger. We made our way through the toes and around just to find underneath a little bit of this darker value of the foot just to bring it out a little bit further. And this foot really wants to top out here and then arch. So I'll make some of my contour line arch over like a block because this becomes the side and through here of the uh, toe. Pretty amazing our toes, what stress they go through, I think. there. <clears throat> and just emphasizing the structure a little bit. I don't want to get too, get too uh, detailed in there. That's enough. That's pretty good detail already for a foreshortened leg. 
and foot. So the real challenge was to get this, not get this too long and to make sure that the squeezing of the calf, the entire calf, you see it here and over here. I want to overlap this just a little bit more than the, um, the photo so you can see it right in through here. This is where the lower, excuse me, the upper leg ends right here and underneath all this over here, this is the calf too as well, bony part of the tibia, really running through here, the lower part of the kneecap, tibia coming down through here. Not, not easy. Got to think, got to think. Drawing is about thinking. You're not stupid if you can't draw. Don't, don't, don't think that. But drawing, drawing is a, a kind of thinking, and it's it's hard. It's visual, visual thinking, and you have to develop your mind. What you need for everybody is you need mileage and experience. Drawing, drawing experience that will that will really help. Maybe we could put a little bit of that shadow in through here, if you will, if you want, just a little bit of indication. Nothing special. <clears throat> okay. I'm just getting a few little marks to. Sometimes I'll come back on with some stronger contour line marks. So I mean, kind of engraving type marks. I don't know where I got that specifically, but I like that look sometimes with little academic studies. I draw academically which I don't always do, for sure. Okay. All right, I think we're there. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, let's go on to our next uh, foreshortened study. Let's take a look at, I'll pull out here and uh, take a look at what's probably a little easier on the foot section of this particular study and then a little bit more difficult on the leg probably the leg part of it it's kind of how I how I see it here all right so as the image comes up here you'll notice that the the uh, thigh comes down pretty pretty straight and then we get into a pretty squeezed calf and then we get a pretty elongated full foot so that's the good news and we can, I can show you how to handle those feet. That's pretty easy, or pretty um, rudimentary, I think, to the most part, um, uh, foot study. So let's see here. Um, let's start in on the calf now. We'll bring the, the calf down over here, kind of the action of the calf, and I'll start to think about its thickness. We don't see all of the, I mean all of the thigh. We don't see all of it, obviously, here to here and I'm going to start to round it off where it curves over here to the right I'm just going to imagine that kind of curving off like a tube coming down so that's the action through here as it comes in that in that direction and then we get the bulging of a little bit of the back hamstring thigh it's hard to see because of the dark, darker shadow on the skin tone right in through here this bulges up, but then the calf bulges out this way, so there's a kind of pooching where those two forms come together. And the calf is on an axis, that's another video I'll talk about later, but there's an axis line here where the calf is on a tilt this way, meaning that the bulkiness of the form is on a diagonal angle, which most forms really are. So we have that bulky calf here. This is where you really get into foreshorting. This is the full calf and soleus and ankle, right, all squeezed into kind of an, an elongated, or, or excuse me, in a compact kind of egg form in through here, right, in through like that. So there's where the real, real strong foreshortening is, and of course the thigh comes out here, and it starts to turn in like so. We have the outer thigh over here, it comes down through here a little bit like so like that and so we have that now we get a strong overlap so we have that overlapping calf in through here now before I go further 
with any of this. I want to lay in the foot. And the foot starts to get nice and straight and make sure I have enough space. You pull out a little bit here so we can see that a little bit uh, clearer and cleaner. Make sure we have enough space for the foot. So, you know, placing the foot, this all comes in, the, the uh, calf all comes in from the soleus to the Achilles, kind of in a narrower two where the tibia and fibula come out. So we've got to, later on we'll have to think about that, this secondary kind of squeezing in of a tube and foreshortening. It's kind of like this movement here where we start to see the ankle will emerge about right here in the heel through that and where the foot's on a little bit of an angle. So we get an angle downward of in diagonal to obviously downward but not quite straight down we get a little bit of an angle here so we can start to play off that foot and really think about a footprint when I when I draw the calf into and we have to have to be careful not to put it on completely uh, straight all over we have more space over here on the calf than we do over and through here so the ankle gets and the heel gets a little wider over through here. So we'll come down, we'll, we'll simplify this foot, and then we get to the complexity a little bit later. Ankle part right in through here, through here, and then we get down to the foot. And we think about kind of a, a footprint in the sand, if you will, or the beach or whatever. What makes a footprint a footprint? And we see the parts of the foot that touch the sand even further. Well, we're getting all of it here will come down like so and we get that toe parts here and wrap it around so we'll keep a very simple kind of bottom of a shoe look or a footprint kind of look to to our drawing so we've got that as our opening gambit if you will for our foreshortened foot in through here and also our calf in through here and then we can start to get a little bit more detail. So that's probably some of the hardest work right into there's the conceptualizing of it. So we get this through here, this hamstring muscle, the biceps femoris split a little bit here. This kind of comes over and through and this bulge. just gives a little bit of a bulge against that calf right in through here and we're going to get a stronger line in through here, believe it or not because they're two separate forms and this we want to bulge that this feeling of this through here that will come on over and then we'll take on this calf over here <clears throat> and get this secondary kind of you can feel it bulge out just a little bit more before it starts to dive for good on in here this egg form back into itself and down through to the top of the foot as it connects over and connect up somewhere in through here and this comes over this is a little bit wide so I'm going to have to narrow this out here like so there we go this comes through here and up around and over overlaps the uh, inner thigh in through here. This is where sweat really gathers if you're athletic, etc. You can feel that later on between the, the legs a little bit. This is all kind of a tube system in through here and this is all really rounded in through here like so for now. <clears throat> so we have that. Start to tighten this up a little bit, this form, so we can get a little bit more clarity. There we go. Through there, and I'll put a little tone there for now. Pull that in. Same thing over here, we'll pull that in a little bit. All right, so let's go for the foot now. Let's put the foot on there. And so we see a little bit of, with the foot, <clears throat> the soleus coming in that's the lower part of the ankle the ankle the higher ankle underneath the calf muscles the quad uh, quadris um, the uh, gastrocnemius muscle the calf the upper calf and then the lower calf the soleus kind of comes in through here so we can actually it's where the skin tone gets a little bit lighter 
right in through here, we want to give a little bit of feeling because it turns here and starts to come into the ankle a little bit and the heel. It's going to attach way up here in the top inside all of this up and through here, but this gets the back of the foot a little further running right through here. And we see just a little bit of bulge of the upper calf right into there. This is going to be subtle kind of thing. I'll have to show it with a little bit more, a little bit more shading a little bit later. But that's going to be important as we get down to the lower part of this leg in a stream for shortening. And then we'll get to now the heel of our foot here. So it kind of attaches, it starts to move here, comes in over kind of a curved diagonal line, and then we get that ending of the Achilles about right there. It's that outer lighter uh, sandy tone, and that comes over of the foot and down a little bit, and right underneath it, that darker tone is where the bottom of the foot is. A little bit more proper as so we get that in there. <clears throat> so that's a lot, there's a lot going on in there, and I'll clear that up uh, in a little bit, make that even hopefully more clear for you. This has a round globular quality to it. There we go. So getting into that foot in through here, the heel form, right in through here. <clears throat> it's a little bit of a block looking into it. And this outer part is kind of the side edge of it in here. And the heel wants to dive in now and leave the bottom of the foot a little bit here. You can see that, so we're rounding out these forms a little bit. And this starts to get a little flatter across with our line. And we come out to the foot here. This little bone that protrudes out. See it protrude out about halfway halfway down the foot, roughly about right in through here. And this is a little bit of a shaved side of the foot, so this turns like so, put a little shade, shading on it. <clears throat> right in through here. <clears throat> we come down. This wants to turn in a little bit, turn. And then this gets straight a little bit here. And then you see where the shading is. This starts to divot in a little bit on that foot, right in through here. Tendons and ligaments down there. Right in through here. Can shave that down. And we'll catch up with this heel wants to come in. Now right in through there, and then as it dives down in through here and softens out, we catch the right in through about here where the foot and the ankle is right in through here. This curls in a little bit further. Right in through here, we can really start to barrel that. Barrel that in, kind of cross contour it a little bit. There we go. Coming on in. <clears throat> Clean line going in through there. Clean that out a little bit. Pick that up. There, see how that cap will pick that up through, through all that, right in through there. And now you can see, hopefully you start to see the soleus 
our merge over through here is a little stronger as it moves. This is a lower calf, a little stronger over here because it's subtle and a little less stronger here. On this side there's more light so we can lighten up our line way of coming through. That's our lower leg below. Everything above this crease here is the calf bulging with its super thickness running through this area. Everything below it is the soleus underneath attaching to the Achilles stranding downward. And of course, this side gets bonier as the tibia and fibia is. Not that important right now, but I do want to give you a little bit of background as well. We're working on um, foreshortening. Everybody's favorite nightmare, right? Everybody's nightmare. So, right in here it bulges. See how this, the, the uh, heel comes in? And see how this bulges out a little bit? This is the ankle just slightly per giving me a little bit of, of information in this viewpoint coming down, angling in a little bit like so. <clears throat> I'm going to raise this up a little bit so we can see it right through there. So it gives us that. And then we will still want to keep that angle as so we come back. We find this part of the foot now overlapping here and in the, the, the toe knuckle mass overlaps this part a little bit further. So we have that. This wants to come in a little bit here. And then we start to have this toe mass pointing out. It gives you that nice curve like a shoe right in through about here. I'll point that where that turns. It's going to start to turn in and we're going to hit here. So now I've got the point, the big toe point, probably here, probably I say I can adjust it. But I'm looking underneath, see where those darker shadows are with the pads of the foot? See how that has a nice kind of curve to it here? I'll look at that too and then get all the way back to the side or the end of the foot where the, past the pinky, where that knuckle of the pinky is of the foot bone there, over and over and through. <clears throat> And then we can get, feel this side of this foot still being kind of like a box or a tube and it wants to just do, see how it just shaves down it. You could do a straighter line, give it a little bit of outline, a little tone here to play off that, make it look a little nicer. But this could also be later on with a darker line, which I'll probably do, it curves, it curves over, it starts to curve. And this curves over here, it's like a tube. See how that tube's over? And then this flattens out of the foot a little bit more. <clears throat> this actually flattens out right in through here the, of the heel. You can see that already starting to flatten out as well. And you can follow this dark down. You can see that dark line as it moves from here, the center, kind of over and through here. It starts to separate the pads of the foot into two distinct movements from the big toe knuckle here, this kind of oval blocky kind of shaped form into the foot pad down here of the rest of the toe structure from the pinky down to the, to the long, long second toe. Some people have a long second toe, some don't. Mine is not long. I have stubby, stubby toes there over there. And that's going to be a separation of the foot in a little bit. And of course, this will arch over a little bit later and get softer. This can arch over here. We have that line kind of like that. And I'll give a little bit of, of tone back here just to play off that a little bit. And we're on our way. We'll keep going now with the with the rest of the foot, toes, and we'll clean up this calf a little bit. So when I pull in a little bit closer now, we'll get a closer measure of what we're looking at here. My great camera skills, pull this up a little bit so we can get into the bottom of the foot a little bit further in the toes and can define that further. I think we've conquered the foreshortening problem, which is nice, but we can define this a little bit, a little bit further here with the, the foot and kind of what we're looking at here and so. We'll go through here and define 
this bulge a little bit more between the soleus and the the uh, gastrocnemius top head. So if you're not familiar with it, you might want to look it up really quickly to help. I'll be doing an anatomy series, hopefully starting in the summer of 2019. Hopefully I can get a grant for that to help me with the research to finish that out, but we'll see how that goes with the university. Okay, that will help further. All right, so we have this now. We're coming down the foot here to everything that we need now. Now we're ready for kind of start to put on the action of the toe. So if you notice this, the big toe here start, starts to pull in more. So this, the action through here, if you want to kind of mass gesture it in here, and then the other big toe here, the smaller uh, toe next to it, tip here, and they all, see how they all kind of cascade. So it's pretty accurate with that, that line. Two, three, and these are kind of bottom bottomed out flattened part of the toe. It's pretty easy to draw actually, not too bad. A little bit easier. So we can get into that a little bit further. We have this canal here, this um, space between the, uh, the, the big toe area and the other toes with this padding here. And this gets a little bit flatter too. And then it's kind of like a shelf. It gets flat, this oval form here. It stays flat, if you can see, and we kind of can shade it across with some contour line. And then it becomes a divot down into and away from us into itself in this. This is separate over here. Of course, you can see where that pulls away from it right in through, right in through there and, and over. So we can do that through here. And then this comes down to, to what we need there. There we go. All right, so we have that. So now we can kind of come in here and let's define this toe area coming in through here, a little padded, a little thicker, and we'll get rounded in through here. And then we'll start to go here. This toe gets pretty pointed here and points kind of, you can see the triangular, the, the larger area here. And as we come across and over the, 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 the foot, it gets a little bit triangular and actually it wants to split apart here and here just a little kind of like a heart shape but then we can come across and then come down and like that into a point around and through there and up and over and we get a little bit of side and it's best shown with a little bit of tone right in through here just a little side of that toe and this tends to kind of wrap around just a little bit of contouring it's pretty flat there so we get that flat bottom and this this can be shaded back just a little bit through here okay let's put the other toes on and then we'll use a little darker line to define and we'll move on okay so the next next toe the uh, toe next to the big toe here we'll start to wrap around in this Padding of the foot wants to come over just a little bit through here, like so. Wants to come around, this wants to come around, come around, come around, like that. And then we get the little separation between the toes. They're pretty close, but there is a little separation. It's the joints, the elongation of that second toe right in through here. Get a little bit of that movement right in through there with that. And then we get the head of the of the toe, the flat backside, like this, so it overlaps and is really flat. It's kind of the, what I call the gripper. I was taught as the the uh, toes, these especially the, the four smaller toes, really grip and are flexible. You can kind of flex them into, they kind of grip onto the surface of what you're walking on. If you ever work on like concrete, dry concrete, that's kind of slick. You can you can really grip onto some even carpet or whatever, wood, hardwood floors, all that you can grip onto. So we have that, and then well, this gets a little flatter because it's reaching the ground. It's flattened out over time through calluses and whatnot. You kind of come over through here and then around there. Work on that cross contouring, and these touch together. They're pretty much in the same plane. So we have one line 
curving in and one line curving out to reach each toe, like so mostly. And then we have the third toe. Make sure you get underneath here. Make sure that, that this rounded, right in through here, this rounded over. That's important to come, come through. We have the next toe. You can see it's a different, different projection. Right in through here. It's a little boxier. Right into this area. And it moves in a little bit different direction. So it's kind of like you draw a square first. Then you get a little bit rounder with it. Right in through here, the third one down in, and kind of over, and you get a little bit of the shaft and it kind of goes away really quickly by the other toe. And we get into this and it kind of points in where, right in through here where the toes come together and they get callous and they kind of shape each other a little bit. Right in through there and this comes over just a little. Starts to to make that toe finish out. And that's the the um, third toe. Then the fourth one, we start to come in even, even further. And of course, we have the fifth one over and through here, the pinky toe coming down. I'm gonna put that on first. <clears throat> in through here, and then we come over. Then we get a little bit of the long as it really turns over on its side, sometimes a lot. In through here, and then we get it to point, and it turns in a little bit there and then it curls wants to curl point right in through there and then curl over and around and show us kind of the bottom and then the bottom side a little bit right in through right in through there like so and then around and over and it comes over This curls in, and then the padding curls out. So you have two opposite lines: one here coming in and down, and one curling out to show that pooching. You've got to get those two opposing lines to show that. It's kind of this idea. I'll show you over here: one against the other, and that shows a kind of bulging. You need to get that kind of together to show the bulge of the of the toe a little bit better. The fourth toe will fit comfortably in the middle with a little bit of the shaft showing to the um, top left of it. I'll go ahead and shade off a little bit and get a little atmospheric background. Makes it look a little nicer. Just kind of a design thing. And then we've got the next toe over here against that one. Okay, and around. There we go, around. So that flattens out a little bit. These kind of make a little flattened impression, kind of like a line like that, a little curved line that they're flatter in through here. And then, of course, all this bulges out where those shadows are over the toes. What's happening is, this, see how this line, this is an opposite line opposed to the toe, and this is a little bit darker in there that gives you that fatty kind of padding that we all need for our feet to survive the the absolute pounding that we give our feet and our, our bones in that area. Shade that out a little bit more and we'll come over here. Kind of make that padding work out for us here and also through here a little bit more. That gives us that padding that we need here. Alright, so now I'm going to move to a darker pencil and we'll kind of finish this out a little bit, kind of emphasizing some things. So we're working in, you know, that overlapping of the calf 
this lower part of the leg and then we're coming over. See, it kind of straightens out and it gets curved, but most of this is, a, is an oval egg form. And it's um, coming off, you know, from the, the um, top of the leg. Here, let me pull out just a little bit. There we go. So you can see that coming in from the top here to the thigh, coming down, it bulges out a little bit. Let me get that back of the leg bulging into the space in between so the calf can, gastrocnemius can attach up to the, to the bone, the femur up in through here. Let me get this nice bulging curve. This really wants to do this. Curve out and around. And then where they come together, that's going to get a darker, bulgy connection into here and into there. Kind of put little dark dots kind of where they touch or they overlap a little bit. To, it, see, that makes it kind of a cave or a crevasse, if you will. It's kind of a weird... If you take a look at master drawings, they have it all over the drawing. There's little dots where they really come together and they touch. And so here, now that we're redefining and finishing out where the gastrocnemius ends, or the calf muscle, calf muscles, the two heads of the gastrocnemius, or, the, or your calf, end, they get kind of bulging. This is kind of getting separation into here. You want to get too complex, over complex with it. But this area, as it turns downward, is coming into the solus and it's like another tube on there but it's very subtle and it's soft and it's transition it gets to the ankle bone here and there's one maybe slightly bulging out just here a little bit and then of course here where we get a little bit more pronunciation right in through there and downward right in through there of that foot and then so to clear this up this is the heel right in through here where we get this area right in through this area is the heel and then it moves off that where it's turning towards us right in through here okay and this is important because because I say it is. No, I'm teasing because here's the heel. Because right in here you can't really see it as the Achilles and that bone up and through here just a little bit. Well, it's not it's not a whole lot. It's really subtle. And I'm drawing what I know and a little bit of what I see to pull it all together to make it all kind of work. We want to kind of clean it out right through there. So we have that. <clears throat> and to clean this out a little bit further. So I'm just contouring around this, this calf to get that to work for us. I'm not necessar necessarily fo following the light and dark pattern of, the, of my model here, but I am using the roundness of the form and shading out just a little bit. And that gives us that look that we want. So we have the outer head, and this is a really foreshortened part that makes the challenge of this drawing, I think, getting that to shape out pretty well and to understand where kind of things are is not so easy. So Achilles heel, that bone spur in through there, and then the actual heel as it turns towards us, and then we'll come in ankle, a little bit of ankle, and then the foot here turns in. And then we'll kind of define a little bit more uh, contouring, hatch line, where we have that hatch line, a little bit of tone, where we have the foot shaping out. This gets overlapped nicely, darker line, and then we'll lighten this up come through. Push that to the toe. <clears throat> where those come together just a little bit, play off that. A touch. This gets buried in there, one line against the other to make that bulge out a little full further. And this gets shaved down. There we go. Working over that. <clears throat> 
through that area around and that big toe shaft and through here it kind of straightens out right in through there then it gets we get to the actual digit there underneath and around to that toe there we go <clears throat> and just finishing these off a little darker in that crevasse and I think we're there there we go nice foreshortened leg let's do one more all right so let's tackle one more foreshortening problem with a, uh, a full leg coming at us a bit and a slightly foreshortened uh, foot uh, coming at us and slightly up above. So with uh, all of the aspects of foreshortening, full body or parts of a body, most of the time in foreshortening you're going to have uh, some parts of the body that may be some in some slight foreshortening and then sometimes in extreme foreshortening. It's a rarity where you have the entire full body coming uh, into focus in extreme foreshortening. That would be the case if, uh, like we saw in Mantegna's Dead Christ, or and that could be even foreshortened further, or we saw um, uh, like a flying Superman or Superwoman coming right at us. Um, facing us with arms and legs extended where they would be so foreshortened to be really flat. And most artists like a little bit of dimension. So most of the time you're going to get individual aspects like a leg and a foot, leg and a foot. This foot's not even that foreshortened really, actually at all. And so you're going to get different aspects. So it's important to work on full body but also find figure studies where and do like we're doing together here that you can uh, find individual uh, parts. Okay, so for our last study with leg and, and foot, uh, we'll work on this particular pose here. Let's pull in a little bit so we can get closer, see this quite well. All right, so we have, um, we'll lay in a little bit of kind of the pelvis up in through here so we can see that kind of help me with keeping this placement. And we're just going to do the one on the right coming over. We won't do the the left one will mercifully will will be a little bit uh, I'll be a little bit kinder <laughs> so we have the pelvis in through here and just kind of conceiving it right here is kind of a boxy bowl to attach the leg onto the belly region the pubic region would be in here which starts to starts to really disappear pretty pretty quickly and of course the belly area with the obliques we get to see just a little bit in this photograph in through here. Belly button might be right up in here somewhere. So we get this belly. Then we can start concentrating on the leg, which is pretty uh, foreshortened. So we have a little bit of action movement here. It's tougher with, with uh, gesture and action when you have severe foreshortening because it's really flat. We have the kneecap in through here, and then we come down and movement over now a little bit here to... Um, the movement of the leg and the angle and then we kind of really start we'll get that foot mapped in pretty quickly kind of right in through here so it's not a lot there so we can start to really use volume even further to help us out with this with this drawing problem so with the kneecap here we'll start to move over with the leg thigh back of the thigh closer to the buttock and then sitting down getting a little bit squeezed on the table on the platform that she's sitting on lounging on here so that gets flatter and then that comes a little bit towards us so we have to be you know careful and mindful so it gets not true horizontal so it comes at us a little bit and if we kept on going through all this material here the uh kneecap the upper lower leg we'd see something like this so you want to be able to feel all that together this oval this eggy box forming through here and so it starts to top off really about right here so this comes over like so right and then it starts to really fall over back in through this region really falling falling down there so we get over now to the the uh, leg to the uh, calf and this is going to overlap nicely 
here with a kneecap. Basically just a tube here, condyle here, to here at a diagonal, right in through just a little bit. And then we'll start to come over with that calf down and through here as it gets closer down into the foot. Of course, it's going to disappear pretty quickly into there. Of course, that other foot, we're going to draw as if that other foot's not there here. And then we're going to come across and catch the top of the calf, lower leg. And so you want to feel this around, coming around here, coming around, coming around. Kind of see how I contour that. You can get in the habit of kind of a light contour uh, with that. That'll help quite a bit. We pull this down just a little bit so we can see that better. There we go. A little light contour there, and then we can catch this calf. Notice the bulkiest part is at an angle. <laughs> and through here, we call those axes of width. We call those. <clears throat> We get a bulky calf coming over here to the other side of the bulky calf that's getting squeezed. And the bulkier you can make it, probably the better to help you with that idea of foreshortening coming down through here. Because it gets pretty squeezed right over through here. And then we're coming around like so. <clears throat> we get this bone. <clears throat> tibia coming through here and you can see where it travels all the way up here and it bulges so you can get the condyle of the bone head right in through here to here it's pretty subtle and then it gets a little bit uh, more dramatic with the patella and the condyle of the, the femur up and, up and through there whoops broke a pencil so we're moving down and through here and we get to a point where we can see that We've got the, the, the basics here of the foot, so we're talking about that patella. After I broke my pencil to go off camera and sharpen that guy, wouldn't be a video by me without some pencils breaking. For sure. There we go. The belly in through here. Just kind of get a feel for that other leg as it comes through here. You could even action in some of that with the foot if you wanted to. <clears throat> kind of over and around just to get a feel for all that how that all works together <clears throat> like so alright so let's put on that foot now so that foot's a little bit shorter than this one coming through so we get the kind of starting with the angle of the big toe I'm going to start right up in here if you get a feel for this thigh coming through on, on the right side here laying downward and starting to come slightly towards us as it comes off the slightly foreshortening into extreme into just uh, slight changes there it's going to move over and then we get this toe which is slightly underneath it uh, in terms of horizontal vertical alignment about right in through here so we have that foot moving in this direction so we just get the feel of the big toe we're sort of laying in the kind of the shape of the foot here. Then that arching curve from the big toe over to the other toes kind of makes a nice shape, shoe shape or footprint shape into here as they connect up. And then it gets pretty foreshortened. This might be a little, this other foot might be a little longer. Down and through here. <clears throat> But the other foot is rising above it just a little bit, so we know it gets a little bit more foreshortened. So I'll draw a little horizontal line, knowing, telling myself kind of where to, where I want to stomp into. So we have the pad of the foot, the big toe, moving across here, and then it starts to, as it gets got pretty wide, then it starts to narrow in, dive in, pretty good in here, where the ankle would be kind of behind it. And then we get this kind of tube-like form coming over. And then it wants to start to curve. We get the beginning of the heel and through here and then arch, kind of arch over. Certainly arch over, actually. And we see through there where the ankle would be just a little bit. And then we come through right and through there. So we, there we get kind of the beginnings of that the tail of the foot there. Okay. All right. So we've got, I think, all of our essentials in now of 
the, uh, the form. Now, what we can do is tighten everything up and we can make this kind of drawing really start to come alive even further with the kind of basic action in the volume. All right, so let's get now a little bit more specific. So we'll take this, this foot now, start to work at the top of the, the patella, but it extrudes through a little bit, it kind of boxes off somewhat, and get, the value gets pretty, pretty similar in there. So you kind of have to be discerning. This boxes off and then it arches and turns. It really is not the end of it. It keeps going above, so I'm going to make another little line underneath and above it a little bit, and it starts to box off here and here and kind of come down a little bit. Of course, we get a little bit of a little bit of tone to show that through, like so. Play off that a little bit, and then this wants to really cascade down as it gets to sort of a shaved side a little bit here. And then we can come on down to the attachment of the tendons and ligaments and through there in the muscles. And then we get to the, the bulk now of the, of the calf as it arches and curves. It's really, it really gets, as you notice, really egg formed right as it's turning on, on through there in that area. And this gets a little bit where those two condyles meet. So it condyles the head, the head of the bone, the tibia, fibia, the top of it, where it meets the condyles of the femur, these little heavy kind of knuckled parts of the, of the bone and through there. So we have this part of the patella moving over, kneecap in through here, if you will, and so we can kind of come down, bring this over and through. <clears throat> Start to kind of just push that, push all that downward, like so. Make that feel uh, flattened. That's what makes the the foreshortening particularly challenging, as it flattens, flattens out pretty good. Then we have this. Of course, we're arching around really much, so like a ball, really, really arched. In, and that's where you get the um, the tibia of that bone. We call it in English the shin bone here and it gets pretty pretty strongly defined where it's really a hard bony part of the leg. If you ever hit that on something you, you know exactly, you've probably done it in your life obviously, do it all the time to degrees and you understand how how much that hurts because it's just pure bone with some skin attached to it, nerves and whatnot. All right, so this moves over, it kind of really curves, continue to wrap this around in through here. We'll arch this with some contour line, kind of bring this over and I'll tighten that up in a minute. We want to get that feeling of roundness, so it's really rounded in through here. Then we can get over to here, to the back of the thigh, where the leg is coming on in. We don't see a whole lot. We might see a little bit of the ankle behind those toes. Uh, I'm going to draw it as if we do, just right in just a little bit, probably down along in here. This just started this bone right in through here and I'll just do a little value shading right in through there. There we go. And so now we can come back with this thigh and we come up to the upper thigh kind of softer in through here really starts in through here and then up and then immediately wants to curve and turn. It's on a big big tube and it's flattening out here to, to kind of turn over and then immediately we see this kind of highlights right in there, that area. And then we want to start to just start to turn this thing pretty good as we come down its volume here. So this gets a little bit more tapered than I have it. It's here. And then it gets a little bit flattened and squat. Do you see that running through there? See, I can start to now really change that, flatten that through, and then bring it coming on, bring it on over and then start to let it hit and bulge right in this area where it hits that table. Get a nice little darker kind of contouring line in through here because this wall wants to curve back on in. Come on in pretty good and on through like so. <clears throat> and then we're back into back into thigh a little bit. This hamstring wants to come over from the buttock 
kind of running through there. The challenge is to get a little bit more of an arch, a little bit flat there, not too bad. And get that through, and then we can start to play with a little, little bit of value. We'll go this direction to enhance the elongation, then I'll come back later with a darker tone and enhance the, the contouring of it a little bit further. You can go in two directions. You have one dominant, or you get a real heavy kind of crosshatch line that's kind of hard to, to control. It flattens out the, the model a little bit. Push that down. All right, so we have that foreshortening working for us. Then we have this moving in this direction for the calf as it flattens, gets squashed against uh, the gravity holding down the weight of, of this leg over and through here. Okay, coming down in through here, then we'll just kind of turn this out a little bit. So we can see all this together. Pulling over. And let's take on this foot now. So we've got this top toe in through here as we have our foot. So we'll start to put on and clear up this, this foot a little bit. So we've got this pad in through here. It's pretty important as it comes over and through, wants to come over in through here. Now I'm going to take the bottom of the toes, all of them, and just con continue with a line here. It's kind of a, a shadow line. It gets the, that's kind of the top of the pad is it does, it contours like this. See that, how it kind of, I'm making some contour lines. Contours down like that. And <clears throat> we have that uh, kind of splitting into two parts again for the, the big toe here just a little bit. And then for the other toes, kind of running through here. It's really subtle. It probably doesn't show up much here, but it is a little bit. And this gets boxed off on the side of the foot, just a little bit through here, and downward, like so. It gets a little bit boxy, and then we can come over and take the bottom of this foot before we get to the pinky toe, and just keep on coming around. What we had was pretty, pretty good, running through there. And we'll come on around with the, the heel, and on up through here. And then we've got that heel bottom right in through here. And of course, these, these split up a little bit in through here with the bottom of the foot, kind of like so, so for now. And then we'll get this side a little bit toned here a little bit. Up overlap beyond that ankle. Then let's start to put on the uh, boxy cylindrical like toes a little bit. So we could come over now to the big toe Remember now, so we get some foreshortening. This starts to overlap here. Let me come on in a little bit, even closer here. Let you see that. Pop it up a little bit further. There we go. A little bit more. Okay. And I'll blow mine up a little bit so I can see better. There we go. Okay. So. <clears throat> Let's get in that toe. Pretty tight little area. So this gets to a little bit of a box, in a pointy box at that. So we get this bottom of the toe here, curls around, gets a little bit undercut, then curls back in, like so, really gently. This wants to come over, this big toe right in through here. And see how it leans, it wants to lean over, lean over in through here. And you get a little bit of the nail, but we're just going to straighten that out just slightly so we can get back over to the foot in through or the other side of the toe in through here and this is a little bit there's a distance between a knuckle and the toe in through here so it's a little bit you see the shaft of it straight and then turning over just a little bit in through here and then up and through that's important to get this flattens out about right there so we get that, that toe knuckle and that top of that toe just a little bit up and through. <clears throat> right in through here. And then we put the, the second toe on. We've got a little spacing between there. Pretty tight little area. I don't have a lot of room. But you get this little shaft in through here. 
which gives us a separation because those toes, there's space between your toes. Right in through. And we get this oval like egg form that's hugging tight to it. Then it squares off its head and through here as it comes in and under, then it squares, wraps underneath a little bit like so. We get a little top, so you have to see that right there, just a little bit of the top of the toe, right in through there. It's not even the nail, the nail gets pretty flat across there and it gets a little bit of toning, like so. <clears throat> Get angle off a little bit. There we go. And then we'll get the next toe, the third toe, coming underneath a little bit. And so you don't see a lot of shaft. You know it's there, meaning the shaft, the length of the toe. A little bit, it emerges right about there. I'm thinking about blocks and cylinders attaching to the bigger block of the foot. If you if you want, you can get inside my thinking a little bit further. Then we've got this toe. See how everything arches down? It's coming around. There we go. Like so. And this comes underneath. Like that. Boxes out a little bit. Everything is on this longer curve. Coming through. A little bit of a cast shadow. Darken that in just a little bit. Keep those tight together. Really a hard drawing problem, but that's foreshortening because these feet, these toes are foreshortened, kind of coming at us pretty small in my drawing. You could do these bigger. There we go. And then we have a little bit more of the undercut of the, of the shaft of the toe right in through there. And then we get down to the fourth toe and through here. It's a little bit longer. We get a little bit more of the top, the knuckle, and then this gets overlapped again by the grabbing part of the toe that grabs the ground, likes to hug it, squeeze it. It's like you're hugging the ground with your toes. They really are amazingly, they're grippers. Like so, like so here. And then we get it down on the pinky. We get a little separation. And so we get that, so you see that undercut too. You get a little top and the bottom of the toe, which is very unusual. Here, here's the middle part, and then here's the top knuckle. So here's the shaft coming in to the toe. That's a pretty unusual, you don't, you rarely get that. And we get that because of this foreshortening and because the toes curl and curve. So you get that. You don't get that often though, but sometimes you can. It's pretty remarkable. It's like an eclipse. Uh, let's see, so we get that toe coming in. Then we have the, the, the pinky toe, which is coming back towards the foot, the big toe. We get some spacing here, and then we get this big toe here that gets a little pointy. Here's the tip of it, the back part, and then we get this nice bulging bulb of the big the little toe in here, pinky toe, and then it wants to point turn here like so, and then we get a little bit of the shaft coming down slightly to the side of the foot, which shows you how tilted the little toe can get. It rounds out and then a back part of the shaft just barely underneath, kind of almost like a little dot I draw it like so. Here we go underneath there and then we can wrap over that through here and then connect it on through here and then this is the side of the foot with the ankle slightly in the back. Whew, that's a lot of hard drawing, right? It's not easy and it has a little, these little shadows being cast on the, the inside of the foot. I'll just kind of put a little glazing tone over that to pull them back a little bit to get that foreshortened foot working for us a little bit further into here. And then we'll get a little bit underneath where that heel is. And through here, and I'll just play with the value. I'm not doing a full, completely accurate value study. I'm just drawing to make it clear for um, what I'm drawing, to make it clear in my mind, and then hopefully, most importantly, clear for you, clearer for you guys, whoever's out there.
my students and YouTube students, etc. And so if we kept going with this foot, we won't do this foot, I promise. I'm just going to block it in further with the toe. This comes over like so, right? Comes over with the big toe being about right there. So it was pretty accurate with the laying. And then down through the head. And the separation of the two. And the bottom of the foot, etc. So we're pretty, pretty close in, in through there. Now we can take our darker toned uh, I'm going to take my darker tone pencil and just clean this up. We'll go one more pass over it and see if I can get this a little bit to clean up and read even, even stronger. So let's clean this out a little bit, tighten this up, and then we'll uh, be done with this lesson. Just taking this foot now and just emphasizing some of the volume, just cleaning it up, and meaning what I'm trying to do there is clear it up in my mind make the drawing a little stronger, maybe adjust some of the length, some of the changes. You can still change quite a bit. There's still room to do more changing. This toe could be a little longer. This cut underneath could be a little bit more defined right in through there and here. And then it hugs together with the big toe and the second toe. They really, they're kind of forming a couple where they're coming together. It's like two, two heads where they lean in as lovers or friends or whatever. Get the top of that toe a little bit higher in through here with that nail on it. Just kind of a line to show that. Maybe just a little clean up. Darker through there. And what you need is that shaft underneath, right in through here, it's a straighter line. Then the pad comes over here, turns over, wants to go this way, but then the toe shaft the big toe shaft comes in a little bit like so to get that really that kind of bulb head on top of that shaft of the big big toe in there it looks a little bit better clean that up a little bit that needed to be emphasized in through here in the bottom of the toe and then we can go back and clean up underneath here you know you can see me vacillate between a palm technique and then a writing technique where I hold the pencil when you noodle into these places I try to do most everything with the palm technique it gives me a little bit more rhythm even for tighter areas but there's just times when I need to move into a writing hand technique just to help finish a tighter a really tighter area out so these are a little bit of space between these toes running through there. This comes over. The shaft really moves. More rounded as this bottom toe kind of rounds out. Through here. Like so. Just kind of come together. And it gets so tight in here it almost becomes like abstract dashes and symbols to get the point across through here. This toe comes underneath a little bit further. Right in through there. So we'll tighten that up a little bit. Do a little bit more tone on it. Throw some shade on it. There we go. And then curl this. Curl this around. Looks pretty good. This is pretty good. And through here. What you want to be careful of is not to get symmetry with these toes. Take each one individually and just break it down into its three-dimensional components and then really look for its specific shapes. They're different from every, every, everyone else or every other toe. So you don't want to be too symmetrical. It doesn't look good because they're really not. So this flattens out to that bulby tip here. Kind of goes into head and it's really turned to the side as we can see here. This is the bottom part where it really gets turned to the side. To here. And then it really comes down and onto itself. And then a little bit of the shaft here because it's so pushed over to the side. To here and over. And then it connects up with the side of the foot about right there. That's where it is, right in through there, so we can turn that, because this is really kind of a box 
boxy cylinder and this wants to turn so I can just get cleaner with it with a darker pencil and go back with one more one more pass and of course this is a little bit of the ankle coming through back back in here I can tighten up that line just a little bit where I need it clean that up a little bit we get a better cleaner read of the communication here without a you know we're kind of doing a contour sort of semi value semi contour line without going into full full value mode because the lighting on this is fairly flat that doesn't help we have that we have the heel turning pushing over still all up in the air and then this pad of the foot right in through here kind of get this around to make the feel of it. And then the top of it's here as it moves back into the the bottom of or the inner inner side of the foot which is turning in on itself actually a little bit more. So I kind of run into run it through there. Okay, we've got that I think pretty nicely taken care of. Clear out this this toe's got this splits into two. I keep wanting to get it cleaner. Run right into there. There it is. And here and then like so. So let's go up now to the calf area in the in the kneecap and we'll clean this up a little bit. Stay lighter in through here if I can. Come over. This is a little bit wider than I wanted. So I'll shave some of this off with a darker line. You can draw over your drawing and correct. It'll make show through, but your the uh, your viewers will buy the correction, and later on you can just shade out of it. And it will never ever ever see it. So I tell my students not to erase a lot. I kind of tell them to take their rulers and their I mean their erasers and throw them across the room. They kind of laugh and hopefully they get the idea later on. Some do. They can. It's okay here to. To erase, but you can get to the point where you don't have to. You'd be surprised. And of course, if you need to make a big mistake, it's okay. Get through here, just kind of wrapping my way around the, uh, the contouring of the of the form. With a softer pencil, it's a little bit easier, but it's a little harder to control in the beginning. So. When we do full value, I'm going to go for charcoal and carbothella, so it can be a little... That's why I break so many pencils, but I probably break pencils in general, so it's always been my case. That's just who I am, the pencil breaker. All right. So, now we're getting around this form. See how this wraps through here? We won't, don't want to stop here, but I want you to feel when you draw this idea of length of the bone coming down. We get that of the shin bone. This is the femur coming through. Can you see it? Here's the other side as it wraps through here where it gets lighter and then it gets darker. Can you see that coming through? That gets that bone. Of course it curves quite a bit. It's elegant when you draw a, a longer length leg from anybody really. It gets elegantly curved and this also comes around so it's contouring and it's length. And you have to be careful which one you emphasize. I like to emphasize contour over length. I'll get length first and shading and then come back with a contour line. But that's just me. Somebody could do it and, and, and will and has done it differently as well. So we get this contour of this calf. It's pretty subtle over here in terms of the shading. It's flatter. The skin tone meets the, the, the natural lighting that they've got for now. The way Just the way it's set up with the rather reflective light. Kind of a car caramel skin tone. Beautiful skin tone coming through. And just kind of contouring over. So we get the head of the calf 
over and through here. And then it wants to curve in a little bit and come out more. So I like this line better than what I had before, just to curve it in, just to show that. <clears throat> Pull that in a little bit more. That dark to make that turn. And then, so we've got that, I think, pretty well managed. And then we'll come come over here with the back of the leg. Yeah, and we'll start to work our way out. So when they overlap, you can see, even in this drawing, it gets, or this image, it gets a nice little turn underneath dark. This wants to curl. This is a secondary kind of curve. You, you want to be careful not to put a harsh line coming in. But there is a secondary curve with the, uh, the back of the leg, the biceps femoris, the hamstring, if you will, right in through here. This wants to really curve through, but it's pretty soft coming out through here as we get this here. And then it wants to, to move in. And I could probably will go ahead and cut into this length a little bit. It's a little bit long. Right in through here. I'm going to come back and Incisively cut in here a little bit. This is a little bit long in through here, so I'm going to shave this off as it comes over. It really wants to come over, and I'll come in with more definitive line about right in through there. So really, take off some of that. You can tone that out a little bit to show that. Take off that line without really erasing because. The shadow of her arm would be maybe right in through. Could be right in through there. Coming over here through here. Now she's going to cascade up and over a little bit more gracefully now. Kind of through and over up and then right in through and down and over. And then connect up with, with that patella right up and through. Right up and through there. Then we can kind of come in and bring this up and over to the oblique, etc. and so on. All right, so curve this over a little bit, okay. We can kind of curve this through. And use some contouring in link lines to kind of turn this, make this a little more 3D for now. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so let's back out, take a look at all of it. All right, so there we go. We've got some foreshortening now with some pretty challenging leg, leg uh, drawings with some attachments uh, to the foot. So the trick is to really notice the, uh, the shortness of the length of the object. So we're taking it really from, if you come up here a little bit, you know, a simple tube that is in its essence its true complete length and then we're taking it and then we're making it in many cases you know really really foreshortened so this is coming almost at us this is a simple idea this is the big idea so it's almost coming at us and it's just got a little bit of thickness to either side depending upon our, on our point of view and its relationship right to us so Something kind of like that. So that could be that same tube now. Um, now foreshortened quite quite greatly. It could be going off, of course, in in that kind of this kind of direction. So really kind of important to know what the basics are and why and what we're doing and what the difference is between these two and the challenges of those uh, ideas as well because they're pretty pretty challenging and for the most part you're going to get uh, foreshortening that is not an entire figure but rather part of the model kind of uh, really like any of these that we just uh, that we just worked on so they can be uh, very subtle foreshortened changes um, and they can be quite a bit more dramatic or more involved uh, foreshortening where you get quite a bit, you know, you get all the fingers foreshortened. And artists like to use that from time to time and sometimes they just try to stay away from it because it's so flat. And it's, and it's uh, not as elegant at times 
to use for shortening. You have to work harder to use it. But sometimes you want a kind of bluntness or strange or uh, strange kind of pose to pull out when foreshortening uh, can give you that uh, kind of pose. Extreme, extreme kind of three point gets into that uh, quite well. So if you like three extreme uh, viewpoints, three point type of foreshortening, you're probably gonna like, or three point drawing, you're probably gonna like uh, foreshortening too as well. Just keep that, keep that in mind as you go. Okay, there we go. So we'll move on to other body part forms and we'll keep on going, all right? Take care. Bye-bye.